Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you how quickly you can recreate a simple game such as Snake in Jetpack Compose. As you probably know, Jetpack Compose is Android's shiny new modern toolkit for building native UI. Building UI elements using a declarative approach is really powerful and intuitive. Developers need to write less code and can build apps faster and easier. And so no wonder many companies like Twitter, Square and others already use Jetpack Compose in their mobile apps. It's definitely a great choice if you want to build personal finance or social network apps. But what about games? Can we implement the whole Android game using just Jetpack Compose? Nobody say we can't. So let's do it. I have chosen the old arcade game called Snake for this experiment. I know. This game has been already recreated thousands of times, so it is not the most original idea, but why not? I am going to create the most basic prototype of this game from scratch. And to show you how easy it is, I want to make it in under 10 minutes. First, let's quickly recap what the game is about. Basically, you as a snake navigate through a rectangular game board, eat apples, and try not to crash into obstacles such as walls or the snake itself. The length of the snake increases with each consume object, so avoiding collision with the snake becomes progressively more difficult. That's it. Enough of theory, let's code. Ok, I am in the Android Studio, where I have prepared a new project using empty Compose Activity template. So, let's turn on the timer and let's start. At first, I create data class holding game state, which mean position or x and y coordinates of the foot and the snake. I use generic pair of two values here. Then the game class with the business logic and the main game loop. The game state is the single source of true and it's propagated to the UI using Flow API. It's immutable to ensure that it will be updated from only one place. I can set default values here. Food is represented as one point in the coordinate system and snake as a list of points. Move variable keeps the direction of the snake's movement. Let's also set up some initial values. And I will need coroutine scope to be able to run endless game loop as a coroutine out of the main thread. The loop is responsible basically for everything. Moving the snake, checking collisions and updating the game state. And it will start right after object initialization. There will be one game loop iteration every 150 milliseconds. And as the game state itself is immutable, I have to create a new game state every time I want to change something. For now, I just copy the previous state and later update necessary changes. I compute the new position of the snake's head by adding the value of the move variable to the previous position of the snake's head. I have to do it separately for x when y coordinates, or in this case, first and second parameters. But at first, Let's define the size of the game board. The snake will move inside a square, so I will need just one parameter. I guess 16 should be enough, and use modulus operator to prevent the snake from escaping from the board. It works like this. When a snake moves constantly in one direction, for example to the left, and hits the end of the game board, it appears again on the other side. In this case, on the most right position, where it continues the movement. And set the new position of the snake to the game state. There will be a newly computed head position, plus the rest of the body. I forgot to mention that I use snake land variable to hold the current size of the snake. Here I check if the snake found the foot, in that case, I increase the length of the snake by 1 and here I check for the collision with the snake itself. In that case, I reset the value back to 4. Now, 
Let's recalculate the position of the foot if it's necessary. It means if the snake ate the foot, I create a new one in a random position. The position will be really random, so the foot could be placed even on the snake. But for now, it's good enough. Actually, I have this shared variable mu that will be accessed from the main thread and the coroutine thread. So I should probably implement some synchronization to prevent some future problems. I can use a mutex that provides a mutual exclusion for coroutines. Using vivlock method, I execute the given action under this mutex lock. I use it in variable setter here and this computation here. So that's the simple game logic. Now let's focus on UI. Here I have my main composable function that takes in data and emits UI elements. Using collect as state function ensures that every time there will be a new value posted into flow, the return state will be updated causing recomposition of UI. Then I create composable function called board with the game state as a parameter. I use composable called box with constraints, which provides handy scope to the child composables. The scope contains, for example, maximum width of parent element that I can use to calculate tile size. The first box delimits the game area by drawing a tick line. The second box represents foot. I use offset to move the box to the required position, calculate it using tile size and foot position from game state and draw a simple circular shape. And the same for the snake. One difference is that I need to go through the whole list and draw one rounded corner shape for each part of the snake's body. That's the game area. And now let's create four buttons to be able to change the direction of the snake's movement. I hard code the button size to 64 dp. I hope it fits into the screen and it will be big enough for comfortable playing. Actually, I need to define the callback. It will take just one parameter, the new direction of the snake's movement. To better understand this parameter, keep in mind that the snake lives in the orthogonal coordinate system, starting from the top left corner. So to move up, I need to increase its position by 0 on x-x and minus 1 on y-x. To move left, the y position will be unchanged and the x position will be increased by minus 1. To move right, the x position will be increased by 1 and so on. I use default material icons to better recognize the buttons. Let's finish the rest of the buttons.
I need to use the callback from buttons to update the move variable in the game object. I create an instance of game object here and use it as a parameter for composable method and that's it. The game is ready. Actually, Android Studio still shows one error, but that's nothing serious. I can just remove this line and build the game and stop the timer. Here we go. It actually works and it doesn't look too bad. It moves in all directions, can't escape from game board, increase length when eating the food and reset the length when bumping into itself. And it took just 9 minutes of coding. But of course, it's just basic prototype with many flaws. However, feel free to let me know if you like videos like this and if you would like to see part 2, where I would spend some time improving the code quality and adding some new features. Also, if you like Jetpack Compose, don't forget to check my other videos. See you next time.